Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, SLC. This is the extension of Alive. We have Marvin Nolte with us, and he had done some uh, some some leather Le molding wet bowls. Uh, wet molding leather bowls. Yeah, and we used uh, some embossed leather on here. If you haven't seen the other video, just jump over to the live video and you can see where we did this round one. But we're going to do what more maybe uh, a scallop type of bowl, right. you could call. Yeah. So that's what we got that's going on. That's what we're going on this time. We're uh, we're live on Twitch recording here, and so we're going to put this on YouTube. So if you're watching it, you're probably on YouTube watching. Probably. <laughs> All right. Probably. Take All it right. off, my friend. Uh, some of this <clears throat> information, uh, you need. You may need to go back and watch the first video where we made uh, this one because mm -hmm. I'm not going to cover those things yep. twice. But uh, I won't leave anything out. We'll, uh, it just may be some of those sky side excursions we went to <laughs> that we won't. All right. This is a molded leather bowl. It consists of two pieces of leather. The outside of the bowl is a piece of Herman Oak 8 9 ounce. All right. And it doesn't have to be Herman Oak and it doesn't have to be your best leather of any kind. We're not going to tool this. We're not going to stamp it. We're just going to make a bowl out of it. The inside of the bowl is going to be this goat. Tenderlux. Tenderlux yep. goat. Nice and soft. It'll mold easily. And we're going to use that for the inside of the bowl. So we need to cut first, draw two circles. Got my 15 inch go, template and pencil. And we'll It's just a pencil, your marking tool of choice as opposed to a silver marking pen? Yes, because if I flub it up, it doesn't show as bad. I know yeah. you can rub off those yeah. silver marking pens, but uh yeah, that's my tool of choice. So, let's get to work. I could have just used the scratch all, but... All right. This is a tough piece of leather. I may have to go through this a couple times here. Because you've got to trust me when I tell you that that round knife, there you go, is sharp. I sharpened them up before I came to town. That's a big old circle of leather. The disadvantage of a pencil mark is <laughs> seeing it. <laughs> Especially That's the bright lights on the, there. Uh, <laughs> All right, we'll do this in a couple of passes here. I could wet this leather down and it would be a whole lot easier to cut, but I'm about to glue it and I don't want to try and glue wet leather. That doesn't work too well. All right, let's see if we can go around this beast again here. Ah, there we go. And get that cut through. Come on, sweetheart. Whew. All right. We got one circle of Herman Oak going here, and we got to have us another circle of this goat. So where'd my magic template go? And for this one, I'm just going to use a ballpoint pen. So let me see. Nah, pencil will work on that. We'll just... I turned it over to the flesh side. And a pencil will work for that. And instead of my round knife, I'm going to go ahead and use shears to cut this out. 
soft leather kind of tends to bunch up under a round knife or head knife. And okay, let's get that back up and get out our hair dryer. All right, we're about to glue these circles together here and just be careful. As you know, contact cement, once you get that lined up, it's not very forgiving. Ah, there we go. All right, we got that glued up. Let's roll it down and make sure we've got good contact. There was a bubble in there that I just rolled out. Okay. So we've got those glued together. Now what we're going to do is dye that veg tape. And we're going to get a dye that's sort of close to the inside which would be Phoebe's English Bridal. Get a pair of gloves here. And... We'll get to work on that. Lots of different methods you can use to apply this dye, but I'm going to use a big old dauber. Here, we'll just I get the right. Yeah, I got the right one. <laughs> Panicked for a second there, and I used the wrong dye, but it's the correct one. This is Phoebe's Pro Dye. Don't worry about the streaks and splotchiness. We're going to put enough dye on there to get rid of those. All right, one more. And even that out a little. There we go. You don't want to oversaturate the leather, but you're going to have to put some on there if you want a nice even coat. All right. Now I'm going to let that set up for just a couple of minutes. I don't ordinarily, if I was working at home, I'd leave that dry overnight, but it's not absolutely necessary. Let's see here. So you got it all dyed up, got. Let it set, let it rest a little bit. You said you would normally let it sit overnight. I'd let it sit overnight to dry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now. we got a bucket of water over there. Sit that in that tub of water. I'm going to leave it just for a minute or so in there to soak the water. So while you let that soak up, we got another um, bowl. You got a piece of plywood here and a staple gun that we're going to be using in our next step. Is that what you got going on? That's it. All right. 
That's it. I can still see bubbles pouring out of this thing <laughs> over here. So, uh, let's see. Drain that a little bit. And uh, I can tell just by how fast it's sucking water up here. Yeah, that's pretty saturated. It's not pulling in very fast at all. And don't worry about the other side. It's going to be wet too. It'll be just fine. All right. Oh, I nearly forgot a step. Before I mold this, I'm going to go ahead and put my cartouche on the back. I can find my circle here. I'm going to find the center of that. Just make a light mark. There we go. On there, get my bench anvil underneath so I can give this a whack. And we'll put our mark on there. And there we are. Now, we put the bowl back. And start molding this leather over that bowl. I've got circles drawn on this piece of plywood so I can center this bowl on there and that's going to be important. You'll see why here in a minute. I'm going to bend that leather over the bowl and I'm going to try and get it centered best I can. over that bowl. All right. So we'll just grab our staple gun, push in, put a couple staples in there, come around 180 degrees and do the same thing. Push that in tight up against the bowl. Those are half inch stables in case anybody's wondering what they were. And now I want to make sure that my bowl is centered under here. And that's where I'm going to use those lines that I drew. There we go. To line that bowl up. So I'm going to come in and do the same thing we did before. on these two sides. Push down, push in against the hole. See if we can get a staple or two in there. And if we have a problem, we can take a hammer, beat that down. That would try to pop up on me. Okay. Again, come in 180 degrees. Push down, push in, and get you some staples in there. Now, that was the easy part. What we're going to do now is put Four more arms in this. I don't know if you could see. Did I have that under there right? I just pushed down with the palm of my hand. And formed those legs. Or formed those creases, I guess you'd call them. On there. Get them evened up. We can maneuver these to some extent, so I'm not so concerned with that. We'll, there we go. Go to the other side, push that down. Now 
that one didn't hold. Heck no. We're going to have to pull those staples out. Give me a second here. Somewhere in that tool bag, I got a pair got of a couple, pliers. You got a, some nippers right there. If it'll grab a hold up and pull it out. Right but oh, yep, that'll do it. Thank you. Don't shoot yourself in the leg like that. Okay. Two more. Just push that down with the palm of your hand. Is this making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Are we doing so all I had right? a question here. You, you you said you would normally let the dye set for 24 hours and then soak it again before molding around the bowl. So you'd let the dye sit and then you would put it dope, dope would, in the water? I would let the dye sit 24 hours and then come back the next morning and dunk it in the water. Okay. And mold the bowl. Again. For just two, just, three minutes in the water? Right. Just give the, the dye a chance to to dry. And I don't know that 24 hours is necessary either. If you dye it in the morning, you could mold it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. the, the dye would be plenty dry enough by then. Okay. Last one. Push that down. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I think the weird part would be for that cowhide is the wetting it. There we go. So maybe you form the veg tan and then you lay the cowhide in afterwards. Ooh. That'd be a challenge. And maybe just uh, if you did the if you did the four scalloped instead of adding well, that extra one in there. And that's that's a good point, Tony. Uh I make eight because I can. <laughs> Not because it's necessary. You could sure stop at four. Mm -hmm. Or if you had a protractor, put six. Mm. And once you form these legs, and I hope you can see here, you can, you can straighten those out and even those legs out to make sure it's more symmetrical. But you could also come in here and actually turn these. Mm so that the legs spiraled to a, a limited extent mm -hmm. anyway around there okay you got that all stapled up you got the legs set how you like them so do we do anything to keep the moisture in on that one nope just let, let that beast dry and it's going to take overnight for that to dry and when you're finished this is what you're going to have you can see where it's taken the Impression, the impression off the ins, off the bowl, and you can see where my staples went in. So the finishing product process on this is to first cut off the top of this to get rid of those staple holes. All right. So let's get a knife out of here. See if we can trim that out. Now, I'm not measuring this. How much? Let's see. Let get out where you can see. I'm cutting off. In other words, I'm not cutting off a half an inch all the way around. I'm just cutting some off. This is a free-form bowl. It doesn't need to be precise and have perfectly symmetrical legs. In fact, I didn't cut that one quite deep enough. Hang on. You don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical. At least, I don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical. So we're just going to cut that flange, if you will, off of there. Okay, last cut. All right. Tony, can we get a close up on the board? Ah, never mind. I can just show it. 
this particular knife, let me get that out. Ah, there we go. Is beveled on one side and flat on the other. Whether that makes any difference in the operation of it, I guess is debatable, but it makes sharpening it a whole lot easier. It's flat, thank you, flat on one side and beveled on the other. Yeah, and you may wonder why this doesn't have a handle on it, and I've seen people wrap them in tape or leather or something, but if you have to wrap this in tape so it doesn't hurt your hand, what you really need to do is sharpen your knife. Not wrap your knife up. All right. Let's get our edger out here. And uh, we'll edge this beast. And this is going to take a little effort and a sharp edger because this one thing, the goat's soft. But another thing is we got to go around some curves here. So just take your time. I will admit that I have made these bowls where I didn't edge it at all. I just left that uh, flat instead of rounded. But I'll admit that it does look a little bit better. It looks more finished. Some people will wet their edges before they do it. Nah, let's just try it here. All right. Get my little foam applicator jobby there. And I probably ought to just use my finger and be done with it. But we'll see how this works here. Yeah, we don't need to pre moisten that. So, you think we're just going to token all this and not use that edge paint? Oh, no, we'll, that, probably, we'll probably still use the edge paint. I was just well, seeing if this laid us down nice and flat to where... Okay, because I'm willing. Right. We'll see what it looks like when we get it all burnished up. Yeah, that, that's a nice applicator, but it doesn't work as good as your finger. That's <laughs> makes a mess of things sometimes. That's much better. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Glad to have you here. That is a long Maker's workbench. Glad you found us. Every Wednesday and Friday at 11 Central. Hour goes a little bit faster than you think when you get on camera, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I think I told you. I didn't really know how long that was going to take, but... Well, I wasn't even <laughs> close. I wasn't even. You got that one about an hour 20. Yeah, but I thought that one was going to be 20, 25 minutes max. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we could get this one done. But, uh, nah, that's, uh, yeah. Oh, well. So much for my ability that's what we to see. judge. Oh, shoot. All right, Tony, I've got it on there. You can seal that. Let's see what up. happens. Uh, excuse me. Let me. Put the lid on there. I stopped bleeding, dear. That's <laughs> a round of applause for my wife. Ah. Uh, Thank you. 
about got her licked. Ah, uh, you know, I just remembered something. What happened? We're going to go off on a little tangent here, but we'll come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> By now, Tony, when he hears that, goes, oh, man. I spend my this life guy, on a tangent. This guy. <laughs> I have conversations in here with everybody in the room, and they don't have, even have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak for them. <laughs> All right. That ain't too shabby. No, it is not. That worked great. Nice product. Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm going to get out a piece of paper here to remind me of the tangent that I'm going on. And then we're going to put the edge paint on, give that edge paint a chance to dry. So, okay. Before we go off. So we're going to use this same little watercolor palette to uh, hold the edge coat. Stir this uh, dark brown, I believe this is. Yes. Dark brown Fenici edge coat. There we go. All right, and use our roller applicator like we did on the first bowl. And we'll just roll those edges. Time consuming process, folks. Not much you can do to hurry that, but worth the time it takes and the time you spend. Putting that on there. Give you a nice finished edge. Is this the most fascinating thing you guys have ever watched? Yes. I no. bet. I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I heard a voice crying in the wilderness. Yes, that's really fascinating. Okay, we've got that done. Let's clean this pin up real quick. And. Who knows if I want to swing down the branch? Thank you. Check that out. Uh, we have never. I'm not sure. Is that what you're looking for? I don't know what you're looking for. I promised myself I was going to put all the tools. Back the in this little box, the toothbrush. Oh, I don't know what you did with that. What did I do? Oh, that's embarrassing. What did I do with that silly... Oh, there it is. It is in the box. I just didn't dig deep enough. Okay. Let's take this. All right. You got that aimed perfectly. We'll just brush that edge coat off of there. I'm using a little rubbing alcohol. And it's dried in spots there, just because it took me so long to go around the perimeter of that bowl. But it's coming right off with the, with the alcohol. So those folks back in, is it R&D we're talking about here? That, yeah. I want to talk about using these bowls. It's a nice bowl. It's a lovely decoration. However, you might want to use it for something. And of course, you can put fruit in it, real fruit, dried fruit, uh, wooden fruit. Uh, it'd be a nice fruit bowl. Uh, but you can also use it as a serving bowl. You could put bread in it, popcorn in it, snacks in it, corn chips in it. But you have to be careful about the inside of the bowl and protecting the inside of the bowl so that whatever you put in it doesn't cause oil stains on that leather. Let me show you what I mean. I did a test. Let's see, there we go. 
This topmost piece is that same get scrap by through one here. There we go. Is that same goat? It's just the colors don't match. Trust me. It's, a, it's the printer, not the leather. All right. So I took, and, and this is a piece of the leather that we're going to use on Friday to make that bowl, the hexagonal sewn bowl. I took a piece of that goat, drew a line down the middle, left one side untreated, and the other side I coated with some Angelus acrylic finisher. Then I crumbled up corn chips and potato chips. If it matters to you, those are Fritos brand chili corn chips and Lay's brand cheddar, sour cream and cheddar chips that are crumbled up on there to see if the oil from the chips would soak into the leather. And an hour later, there's the result. This is the side that I coated with the acrylic finisher. And this side, and if I hold that so it isn't there in the reflection, you can see as oil stained badly. So, whatever you're going to use to line this bowl, test it first. If you plan to use the bowl to put food in, make sure that A, you can put a, a finish on it, and B, that the finish works and keeps the uh, bowl from soaking oil in. Let me reach over here and show you. Uh, ah, there it is. This is the same style of bowl. Let me move these photos. Same style of bowl. Obviously smaller than the one we did. And looks like the it's pretty close to the outside. But the inside of these two bowls is some kind of reptilian patent leather. In my experience, the best interior you can get for one of these bowls if you actually want to use it to put food in. Because nothing's going to soak through that patent leather. You can put popcorn, peanuts, chips, cookies, whatever you want inside of there. But you can do the same with the one I made today if you put a nice acrylic finish on it. All right. So you're using the Angelus The uh, Angelus 610. 610. Yes, sir. And on both the inside and the outside. And you don't have to be particularly fastidious about this. Just get it in there. It's going to take you particularly fastidious. That's some big words. I think I, I think I dated her sister once. <laughs> anyway, that's another story we don't want to go into. But, so uh, once you get that all in there, how, are you putting one coat on there? You put one two coat, coats on one there? One coat. It will will protect it. And uh, whenever so two coats. If if you're you ever heard of a person being a belt and suspenders kind of guy? Yeah. Yeah. Not really sure. So he just keep his pants up. He just uses both. Well, well, it could break. Two coats. <laughs> it could. It could. <laughs> and some, some uh, foreign agent could come and clip your suspenders and make your pants fall down. Yeah, but in any be, case. Then you'll be glad that you have the other, ones, other set on to keep your pants So on. it's not like I've never been that way. <laughs> but I think one coat will do you. You want to put two on, it'll, it'll go on just fine. This is a great finish. And it goes on nice and even. Uh, you don't, so you want to put an extra coat on there. So and once you get this you on there, that. how do you, do you just wipe it out? Nope. No, I mean for, say you use your food. Oh, 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 to, oh. To clean it once yes. you get your, yes. you get your chips Just take there. a damp cloth and wipe it out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you need to reapply at any point? I never have. Yeah. 
Uh, but then it's not something that I use daily. Mm -hmm. uh, You're not eating but if, Cheerios in there? If you... And, <laughs> if you uh, now we're going to get into a discussion here about <laughs> which cereal is best. Uh, I think if, if you had to, you know, okay, once a year, refinish it, big deal. That's a five-minute operation. Uh, you'll notice that I am going around and around on here, so I guess you could be, call it that It may be one coats. coat liberally <laughs> applied. Liberally applied, thank you. Yeah. I, well, I want it to be even. I don't want it to be splotchy, all right? So... I'm going around here, and it may look a little splotchy, but you'll have to trust me, folks. It'll dry even. Okay. I think that's about enough on the inside. One thing that you do have to be careful of, and those of you who have used edge coats can bear me out on this. That acrylic finish, if you rub hard enough, will lift that edge coat, or at least lift a little color mm -hmm. off of it. Uh, just keep that in mind. It's it's not. Let's see, for white paper towel. It's not doing that now, but it could happen. All right, let's do the outside of this. And we'll be finished. Mm -hmm. I don't dribble it all over. So we're just going to liberally apply we're one coat? Liberally apply one coat. <laughs> now, would you saddle soap this afterwards? I? No. No. And I should have mentioned this. When I pop this off of this bowl, mm -hmm. I need to put oil in it. Okay. Liberally. Liberally. So that all those little happy fibers get a drink uh, of Nice foot oil. Because you you've dyed right. it, you've soaked it, <laughs> it's thirsty. Yeah. You abused it to a point by soaking you, it in water and then, get, then made it dry out. Yeah. Now it needs to. Because. Uh, as good a finish this as this Angelus is, you're not going to be able to oil through it. Right. You're not going to be able to, to oil this bowl. And uh, so you need to do it so sometime. You could, you could even oil it before you, you know, you did all your edge, you did your edge painting. You could oil it again right. and then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then do your finisher. And then do the finish. The only. Finish, I know, and somebody's going to call me on this. <laughs> I can make absolute statements like that. But if you use Feeming's tan coat, mm -hmm. you can oil through that. Mm. It looks like an acrylic finish, but it isn't. Mm. Whatever is in there, uh, you can oil through it. And that's why a lot of people use uh, tan coat. I use a lot of tan coat. It depends upon... Uh, if I'm making a holster, mm -hmm. and somebody might want to re-oil that someday, yeah. I'll use tan coat on it. Uh, but that's the end. That's our finished bowl. So, mm -hmm. the, yep. So there's your uh, top side. Flip that one over. We'll look at. We can look at both sides here. All okay. the ones are on that. There we go. Yeah. So there you are. And. Uh, Sorry, one more comment, and I, and I promised everybody in last hour I'd do this. <laughs> Golly. The difference between dyeing it before mm -hmm. you mold it or after. Okay. Okay? This one was dyed before I molded it. While it was still flat. While it was still flat. This one was dyed afterwards. It and has what a finisher on it, or what, does it have it, satin? It has a. I'm not sure what finish. 
that has on it. It must be a satin finish for sure. And it may not show on the camera, but this is a lot more even finish, all right? A prettier finish, but this finish has character. See how those arms lighten up? And these are just the same uniform color because I bent this and it lightens up the leather. Kind of when uh, you put that die on there, when you squeeze those together, you're giving a little bit of a pull up to, pull up, a, exactly. veg, to a veg tan. Pull up to it. Yeah. So there is a difference. So that's it, my friend. Is that enough? Have I abused these poor people? <laughs> I think it's good to you know get out and and try something and and experiment with it. We talked a little bit about could you do a hair on with it? I don't know. Yeah, but I you, don't know. You can you can surely uh, try, but getting at the wet part will be a little bit weird. Maybe it's one where you you know you mold the veg and then I go and I lay the hair on and glue it afterwards. Yeah, and I just that reminds me if I'm assuming the cow hair. Mm -hmm. is the same biologically as human hair. So if you got it wet and molded it, would it permanently put swirls and kinks into the cow's hair? It, well, know, maybe not the cow's hair. You might have to steam that out. Yeah, I, I think you can lay it around because it'll lay around corners. Well, People it, make, okay. it, make it out of tote bags and things like oh, that. Oh, all right, all right. It's just getting it to lay where I can glue this part of it. Yeah. It would be, it yeah. would be, a, it'd it'd be, be a something challenge. to try. Maybe we'll try it. Maybe yeah. I can get Denny. Yeah. We got some little calf skins out there that we may be trying. But we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks, Marvin, so much. Oh, for you're welcome. Coming over you're from welcome. Wyoming. Yeah. And uh And we'll see some of you Friday. Yep. We'll we'll do this again but different. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everybody.